Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the PLC counter programming. Three things to know. Now PLC ladder logic counters are used in just about every PLC program. They will indicate how many times something has happened within the controller logic. Counters are used to trigger other outputs or items in the PLC. You can find counter applications in a variety of every things every day. Now we will be discussing three things you will need to know when programming counters in the PLC. And a sample program with a counter will be shown. This will have a 3D simulation with the PLC. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. We have links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So I'm currently using a Do More Designer uh, software with the Do More Simulator, which has full communication capabilities. That's why I'll be able to communicate to our 3D environment when we get there. So the first thing we'll do, or the first thing you need to know, is that basic counter inputs are one shot or leading edge. So let's just move this over. And we will move it right about there. And so all inputs to counters, and here's my counter right here, are leading edge, all the inputs themselves. And in this one here, I have a sample of a, a counter. It's an up counter. And we are counting up to three in this case here. And the triangle here says that it is a leading edge for that instruction. Now, what does that exactly mean? Well, let's just take a look at a... Um, an input to the PLC. And my input here will be off, then it will transition to on, then it'll be on for some time, and then transition to off. Now, it's important to know that a PLC scan is a cyclic event. So what this means is that we'll read our inputs, it'll execute our program, it'll do diagnostics and communication, and then update our outputs. And this happens very quickly in the PLC. And modern PLC controllers have scan times of one millisecond or less. That means that the scan is happening more than a thousand times a second. So if we look at that same input that we had prior, you can see if I put my PLC scan on there, you can see that it scans multiple times as that input turns on and then turns off. So if I only use the, um, the level edge triggering, you can see here in just this odd example or this example here, we have it triggering five times. So it would count five. That may not be what we really want to happen. So typically all counters use the leading edge or a one shot when they look at uh, inputs. So that was the first thing you need to know. The next thing you need to know are that counters are, are, are basically um, simple math instructions. So all counters are just simple math instructions. We have a addition or subtraction with every counter input. This accumulated value is known as the preset value or PV. The set value or SV is compared to the uh, preset value and an output is turned on. Take a look at the following example here and we have, um, there's my regular counter and you see once it's timed up or a counter has been done, it turns on an output. Our counter, we can make it up of a couple of different instructions. The first one here, so we have X2, you see it transitions on the leading edge, it will increment D0. Then if D0 is greater than or equal to three, it output Y1 turns on. And then X3 will move zero back into D0, which will zero it out or reset it. So that is uh, a couple of, or actually three different instructions in order to uh, mimic a counter. And we can actually try that out. 
So let's uh, uh, take a look at back to the simulator. And here is my uh, input here. So if I hit two, it transitions and we count one, turn it back off again, hit it again, two. And you see two is less than, or, or not greater than three. So I'll put Y1 is not on and Y1 is right here. Then we turn it back on one more time. It now turns the three and Y1 is on. So it has counted three times. Turn it back off again, turn it back on and still it's above that three. So it's still on. If I turn that off and then I will turn on um, X3 to reset it. You can see I move zero back into D, D zero, so it zeroes it out. If I try inputting again with the reset on, you can see that it will not increment anymore. So that, so basically, um, by breaking the counter into simple PLC instructions, lets you see how the logic works. It gives you a better understanding of the counter operation. So going back to uh, our original counter right here. The brings us to the three, th the third thing that you need to know about time, um, about counters in the PLC is that timing char charts will help you understand what's actually going on. So let's call back up our timing chart here. And we will also look at a the simulator at the same time. So our timing chart, we have our input. It will count uh, one here, two, and then three, and then the output turns on. You can see that here. And then when we get a reset, it resets it and goes back to zero. And this is our present value or our PV value. And when our reset is on, our input is ignored. So we have our counter right here. So let's turn on X zero. And when we do, we see our pre preset value of one right here. So we're right here in the timing chart. Turn it off, turn it back on. Now we have two. So we're right here. Off again and transition to on. And now we have, we're right here. It turned it on and we have a present value of three. When three is on, Y zero is on which is located right here, as well as right here on our simulator. And it remains on even if I hit it again. In this case here, I have one extra input and you can see my accumulated value goes to four, but it's still on because of the counter being past the set value of three. So if I turn on my reset, the reset goes back to zero. I then try turning on X zero again, and the present value still remains at zero. So you can see a timing chart is very useful in determining exactly what's going to happen in the PLC based on your logic. So that is the timing chart. Now, if we look at an actual application, we will look down and we were going to be using the easy PLC sample program for apple picking. So we're going to use the start and stop button. It's going to control the application. When the machine is started, the conveyor will start and move a box in the position with photo cell number one. The box will be loaded with 10 apples using the apple uh, creator output. The photo eye number two will count those apples. And when the set value is reached, the apple creator is turned off, the box moves down the conveyor and another box arrives and it starts all over again. So let's take a look at actually that application here. So that's what it looks like. And if I you see right now, I have a blinking uh, start button here. So if we look back at the logic for this apple, you can see here we are waiting for the start button which is right here. 
And then we have a stop button, which right here. And then when we don't have our start, you can see that we have our flashing output and that's exactly what's happening right now. So what we can do is we can actually then um, start that if we wanted to and watch that operation. Once we have that start of the packaging and we don't see our photo sensor number one, which is right here, it's showing our box coming in. Then we have our conveyor three, which is moving, which is right here. And then once we have our apple count done, we're going to put a little time delay in there to ensure that the it's out of the way. Then we can um, move the conveyor again. The next part, it, we will actually create the apple. So once we have the start signal, we have photo number one on. So we know that the box is in front of the sensor and we don't have our count. Then we turn on our output for our apple creating. Then we have our apple counter itself. You can see that we have to have it started. We have to have photo sensor number two, which is right here across the end of the conveyor. Now it's up a little bit. That's why we need a little bit of delay. And then we have a count of 10. So we're going to count 10 into each box. Then if our photo sensor number one of the trailing edge, so once it, the box leaves the sensor, it will actually reset that counter back to zero again. And then we have this counter delay of timer of one second that allow the, the apple to come from this sensor into the box for us. So that is our program. And now let's just uh, run it and see. So first of all, we're gonna start and you can see that our flashing light stopped and we have our box coming in. It's positioned now in front and we have started our apple. So now we can see our count right here. We're at two, three, and this count will continue up until we hit count 10. Now, once we hit count 10, then we, what we want to see is we want to see our timer for one second go on. That will allow the apple to fall from the sensor into the box. And then the, the box will then move exactly what it did. Once that's moved off, we can see that the next box will now arrive and our counter is now reset because we are off the trailing edge of that uh, box signal. Here comes the next box. And again, our same practice procedure comes and we start counting the apples. We can stop this anytime. And you can see now we're at three apples. We can start it again. And it knows exactly where it left off because that's where um, our counter right now, we've made it, it's retent memory retentive. So very nice application and this software package, there's links below for a special discount on this software itself for the easy PLC. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your description to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.